Hello, welcome to the City and Guild's Moderation Portal training webinar for centres delivering our technical qualifications in 2017. This webinar has been designed to support you in using the Moderation Portal and will cover the following topics. Accessing the Moderation Portal, Centre Responsibilities, Account Management, Submitting Marks and Evidence and the Contact Diary. Before we start this webinar, we'd like to remind you of the following key submission dates regarding the Moderation Portal. The 19th of May is the deadline for synoptic assignment marks and samples of evidence to be uploaded to the portal. The 9th of June is the deadline for submission of all marks and evidence for 2935-02 and 2935-03 project qualifications. The 16th of June is the deadline for results and evidence to be submitted for optional units, employee involvement and any other centre assess units. For support with evidence requirements, including details of sample sizes, please refer to the marking and moderation guidance available on our website. By now, each centre should have received login details for a unique administration account which was provided by the moderation support team on the 5th of April. If you haven't received these details, please ensure you contact the moderation support team urgently. Firstly, to access the moderation portal, you'll need to go to the following website address, moderation.cityandguilds.com. We recommend that you save this website address to your favourites. This will take you to the main login page, as we can see here on the screen. The account provided by City and Guilds is an administration account. You cannot input marks or upload evidence using this account. We will now log in to our Example Centre's administration account. When accessing the portal for the first time, you'll be asked to change your password for security reasons. If you do forget your password, then please contact Moderation Support, who will be able to assist you in resetting this. Once you have logged in successfully and changed your password, you'll be directed to the Moderation Portal homepage. This is where you should see all the technical qualifications your centre is delivering this year. At the top of the page, you will see three tabs, Home, Team and Moderation. These will allow you to navigate around the portal. Once you have logged in through the administration account, you can then create other accounts within the portal. The administration account is a generic account provided by City and Guilds, which you will use to log in in the first instance. You'll be able to identify this as the username will be your centre number. This account should be used to manage users such as markers, assessors and exams officers, who will require access to the portal for uploading marks and evidence. You can only have one administration account per centre and cannot upload any marks or evidence from this account. The second account available is a marker account. This account is created by the administration account. Markers are able to input candidate marks and upload evidence to any courses or cohorts assigned to them on the portal. The administration account is responsible for assigning these qualifications to the marker. The person at the centre responsible for carrying out any actions set by the moderator, for example the IQA or lead marker on the course, will also need to have a marker account. This person must be assigned to the group evidence section for each cohort of learners under the assessment. The marker account assigned to this section will receive notifications of actions plus any feedback from the moderator. It is important that this account is correct correctly set up using an email address to ensure feedback is received. Now we have explained what each account is for, we're going to show you how to create a marker account. From the home page, click on the team tab. To 
To create a marker account, you need to click Create New Staff on the right hand side of the screen as shown here. A pop-up window will display where you will be able to add all required details for your marker. Anything marked with an asterisk is mandatory. Please remember to input the marker's email address so that they receive a link to their login details. We will now create a marker, Tim Davis. Once you have added in all the required information, as shown, please click on Create and Assign Courses. This will take you to a new page, which will allow you to assign the marker to the qualifications that they are responsible for. You need to ensure that you are on the Courses tab. As you can see on the screen here, a list of available courses ready to assign is displayed on the right. For the purpose of this webinar, we will assign Tim Davis to Level 2 Technical Award in Engineering. To assign the qualification to a marker, click to select the qualification from the list on the right and move this across to the Assigned Courses section on the left of the screen using the arrow buttons in the middle as shown. This qualification will then show under the Assigned Courses section once you have successfully moved this over. Once you have completed the assignment of courses, please click update at the bottom of your screen to save the changes. You will need to send the login details to the marker along with their initial link to the moderation portal. To do this, on the same screen, you will see the email login details icon on the right side of the page as shown here. Clicking this icon will display the following message. Are you sure you want to email this person their login details? Click yes. You will then have the option to view the message sent to the marker if you wish. The marker will receive an email with a link which will expire after 48 hours. They will need to follow the instructions on the email to set up their own unique password for the account. Marker accounts should only be used by the person responsible for the email address associated with that account. It is possible to create more than one marker for the same qualification. We will now go back to the team page using the tabs along the top. Once your marker has been created, they will be listed on this page as a user. Here, you'll be able to manage their account and any other accounts created. Under the Actions header on the right, there are three icons, which when clicked will allow you to 1. Edit the marker details, 2. Send the marker a link to their login credentials, and 3. Delete the marker. Once your marker has an account set up, they can log in using their own credentials to start the upload of marks and evidence for the qualifications and candidates they are assigned to. We will now log out of our Centre Admin account and log in as a marker, Teresa, to demonstrate how to upload marks and evidence. Once on the home page, the list of qualifications the marker is assigned to will show. 
along with the status the qualification is at within the moderation process. If no marks or evidence have been uploaded, the status will show as ready for marks. As we can see here on the screen for the 6002 830 Level 3 Employer Involvement. From the list, find the qualification you wish to input marks and evidence for, and under the assessment header shown here, click on the qualification unit title. Here, we are going to use the 6002-031 Level 3 Barbering Synoptic Assignment, which you can see has a status of marking in progress. This means some marks have already been inputted for this cohort. This will take you to the moderation tab, where the qualification information will already be pre-populated into the search candidate section, as you can see on the screen. The assessment or unit you wish to input marks for can be selected from the drop-down under assessment, and then you can click on select to confirm your choice. The candidates taking part in this unit will appear in the list below as shown on the screen. If you have a large cohort, candidates may be displayed across multiple pages. You can navigate through the pages here using the arrows. Within each cohort of learners will be a group evidence section. You'll be able to identify this as it will show as the top line of the list and there is no option to input marks here. In group evidence, you should upload evidence and documents which relate to the whole cohort rather than an individual candidate. Examples of documents to upload to group evidence are your employer involvement planner and any personal interest forms if required. Full details of the documentation to be included in group evidence can be found on page 21 of the Moderation Portal User Guide. The final requirement for the group evidence section is to assign a lead marker, the marker responsible for the full cohort of learners. This will be the person responsible for communicating with the moderator and carrying out any actions set after the marks and evidence have been moderated. For example, this may be your IQA. It is important that this lead marker has been set up correctly when they were created with an email address to ensure they receive notification of any actions or feedback from the moderator. Once you have completed the requirements for group evidence, you can then input marks for your candidates. To do this, select a marker grade from the drop down function under assessed results for each candidate as shown here. If you already have a record of all candidates' marks or grades stored electronically on a spreadsheet, this can be uploaded using the import results icon you can see here. Please ensure that your spreadsheet is in line with a sample template document available when you click there. If you don't already have this in place, we suggest using the first option above and simply selecting the marker for each candidate from the drop down, as this is a much quicker and easier process. Next, under the marker header, you will need to add the name of the marker associated with that candidate. This can be done by typing the first few letters of the marker's name into the box as shown. This should then give you a marker's name to be able to select. If your marker does not have an account set up, you can simply type their name into the box. Once all candidates have marks and markers inputted, you will then need to click Save. If your list of candidates is across multiple pages, please ensure you save at the end of each page to avoid any data loss. For a sample of candidates, you will also need to upload relevant evidence of assessment. Please refer to the Marking and Moderation Guidance document on the City and Guilds website for further information on sample sizes and requirements. Under the Actions column on the right-hand side of the screen, as you can see here, 
you'll be able to click on the evidence upload icon, which will allow for the upload of files and documents for each candidate. You will see a drop down section appear below the candidate information, as shown on the screen here. You then have the option to either drag and drop files from your computer into the white box on the left, or you can click in this box, which will allow you to browse and select files and documents from your system. If you have multiple files to upload, you can do this using the option to upload from your system and then holding down the control key on your keyboard while selecting the files, as shown here. Files uploaded will display in the box to the right. Please ensure all uploads are in the required file formats for the portal. You can find the full list of acceptable file formats on page 23 of the Moderation Portal User Guide. Once all evidence has been uploaded, click Save again to record any changes. Should you wish, wish to review any documents uploaded, you can click on the Evidence Upload icon again which gives you the option to open the documents uploaded and also alternatively delete any evidence no longer required or that's been uploaded in error. When you are confident that all marks have been inputted, a marker has been assigned to each candidate, all relevant evidence has been uploaded for your sample of candidates and all required documents have been uploaded to the group evidence section and a lead marker has been assigned, Click save again to confirm all of the above and you will now need to change the moderation assessment status. This will be set to ready for marks by default when you first start in the portal. If you click the drop down menu, you will see the option to set either marking in progress and marking in complete. You can use marking in progress when you've started the marking process but are not yet finished and remember to click save at this point. When you've completed the input of marks and evidence, you must set the status to marking complete and click save. This notifies City and Guilds and your moderator that the cohort is ready for moderation. The final part of our webinar brings us to the contact diary. The contact diary is designed to be the communication tool between the moderator and the lead marker assigned to each cohort or candidates. This is the person you have assigned to the group evidence section. If you have not assigned this to your lead marker or have not set up their account correctly using their email address, you will not receive notification of any communication from the moderator. You can access the contact diary by clicking on the diary icon as shown here under the actions header. A box will appear underneath a candidate which will show any diary entries made by the moderator. The contact diary can be used for the following, where a moderator requires further evidence to inform the centre of missing documentation and to provide feedback to the centre on the centre assessed components such as the optional units. This brings us to the end of the Moderation Portal training webinar. In this session, we have covered all of the main functions of the Moderation Portal and hopefully answered any questions you may have had. However, further support is available from the Moderation Portal user guide, which is available on the City and Guilds website, or the Moderation Support Team, who are on hand Monday to Friday, 9am to 5pm, to offer one-to-one -one over the phone support. You can contact us on 01924 206 719. Alternatively, you can email us at moderationsupport at cityandguilds.com. Thank you for watching.